I think I understand this and I'm able to talk to you about it. Is this something, so this is my community and how it thinks of everything in the world, all right? Right. Do you have a way of relating what you think about in terms of what my community has wrong? Does this mean anything to you? If if you remove gravity outside of the equation, you take gravity out because okay, you, gravity is affected. Gravity is co- actually covered by that strong electrical force. Terrence, Terrence, one second. Without this is not a gotcha, and it's no, not no, me. I know. I'm okay. not. I'm just saying. Do I'm, you know how to read this? As best as we're talking about, um, ex, um, I as 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 imaginary. Yeah. You know, d to the four. I don't know what the d represents. So that that's the that's the volume element saying that you're in four dimensional space and you're going to take an integral. And why to a negative g? Why to a negative gravity? Yeah, that's the determinant of the space time metric with which you might have an issue. Okay, so in other words, you're normalizing, you're saying that if, if the rulers look one way or the rulers look another way, according to Einstein, you have to put more weight or less weight on a region of space. Do you know what that R is? That, 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 that's, the, that's the foreplay, and then in the parentheses is where the stuff gets crazy. Explain it. That's what's called the scalar curvature. So after Einstein did his big general relativistic field equations, um, that was like Einstein scaling the sheer face of Half Dome. Hilbert walked up the backside like a week later and said, you know, you, you can derive your super complicated field equations from the simplest thing in the world, which is the scalar curvature. So when you say everything is curved, that R is the scalar curvature of Einstein's pseudo Ramanian metric. And then remember F mu nu? That's what we were just riffing mm-hmm. on before. That's saying we don't know what to do with the electromagnetic stuff, so we're going to do the stupidest thing possible, and we're going to figure out how big it is and square that, and we're going to shove that into this thing to be minimized, which means make this as small as possible. So give me the the configuration that gives me the least electromagnetic size. Then, because of 1954, a guy named C.N. Yang and his sidekick Mills who didn't do nearly as much afterwards, said, you know what, the strong and the weak force are exactly the same structure as electromagnetism, and we didn't know that. So nature, in that first line from the R to the W, takes curvature four times, and three of those are doubled, like F, F, G, G, W, W, but one of them is singly in there, and that is really sort of the soul of the incompatibility, not what Ed Witten says about... Um, you can't quantize gravity. That's not the discrepancy. We've been lied to for a long time, in my opinion. What it is, is that the curvature that enters as gravitational and the curvature that enters as the internal forces, the nuclear forces and electromagnetism, occurs differently. One is Ramanian, one is Erismanian. The line below that, Dirac, in that term, psi bar d psi, is telling us the kinetics and the interaction through minimal coupling of the matter with the force that's in the line above. Right. And then the last three terms are the fudge factor due to Peter Higgs, because when we found out in the late 50s, uh, a gal named Madame Wu, the dragon lady of physics, told us that if you put cobalt 60 and let it beta decay in a strong magnetic field, mm-hmm. all the particles come out spun one way. And that left-right asymmetry meant that you couldn't put in masses in a standard way for the matter, which is showing up as psi. So instead what we do is we have this thing, which is a field called the Higgs boson. Psi is the wave function. Psi is the the fermionic wave function of the matter. That's the quarks, that's the electron, and that's Mm -hmm. all the neutrinos that are penetrating us all the time. That kinetic term, the DHs, tells us how this Higgs field will move. But mostly, you see, in this, imagine that in this room it's 69 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, okay? You think that it's the same everywhere, but maybe where Joe is is actually like 68.7, and over there it's 70.1. There's a different frequency, a different And so that, that H thing is said to have a VEV that varies slightly in the world, value, uh, vacuum expectation value because the vacuum isn't boring. Right. Now that V of H... That is the potential term that you neglect every time you say that all energy in the world comes from kinetics. 
That's not true. And that V, and it, there's a portion hidden in those F, FFGGWWs, which is pure potential. That last thing, which is not commented upon here, is called the Yukawa coupling. And that last term is how the Higgs field gives the illusion of mass to the matter, which was prohibited from having a naked mass because of the efforts of Madame Wu and, and Yang and Lee, which is the same Yang of Yang and Mills. That thing that we just went through, which may have been boring to people, no. is the source of everything we know about the world at its deepest level, right? This thing right here, which might be called the partition function, is a Feynman path integral of this. And if you could understand what this is, we don't know of anything that isn't in what you're seeing. It's a woe. Can I get a woe? Whoa. Can, can I get... <laughs> I live for this. What? You said you want to break up. Your makeup is running down your face. You see me on a date, love. You fake love. Pretend like it's all okay. Because I don't think that you know this. I've been better without you. I don't think that. 